So hello everyone. I think you remember in the last session we did some process uh, related to this psychometry. We have uh, two more left. And then quickly let me complete that uh, cooling process and also the mix air process. After that we'll talk about the equation for sensible latent. Then using this enthalpy we'll find three equations that we'll use at the time of uh, the load calculation especially at the time of heat gain through ventilation infiltration etc then we can move to chapter 4 classification of air conditioners so here i'm going to share the screen so the next process uh, you can find on screen it's a evaporative cooling process okay and uh, this process you can expect for the air coolers or uh, you see air cooler also known as desert coolers right because uh, the air cooler work efficiently in the desert areas the reason why air coolers are working efficient in desert area because in desert areas uh, even in summer the humidity is less so the air will have the capacity to hold or extract more water at the time of evaporation and more evaporation means more cooling because you know the concept of evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling means uh, because of evaporation of water, extraction of heat from the air, so that the temperature of air can reduce in case of evaporative cooling. Okay, so this process related to evaporative cooling, especially for the desert coolers. And now in market, even in India, this uh, desert coolers by Symphony, they are offering this uh, desert cooler concept uh, with the ducting. In uh, desert area and Gulf, uh, it is used for many years, but uh, even in India by Symphony, they are offering this uh, desert cooler concept with the ducting compared to the normal air cooler uh, that is a bit expensive, but uh, anyhow, the concept is useful because uh, even in Hyderabad city or in India, where you'll find the city with the low humidity conditions in summer, one can use this uh, desert coolers so that you can expect the efficiency because in desert cooler uh, the power consumption compared to the air conditions air conditions very less okay you said in evaporative cooling process no condensation will be occur right no only All sensible cooling only sensible cooling. you cannot expect the latent cooling that's the reason in desert areas it is applicable in in area where you have the humid condition you cannot expect the required condition as per the human comfort because uh, in humid area it is required to extract the moisture reducing the humidity so even though if you maintain the temperature you cannot feel the comfort mm -hmm. right but in desert area this is this work efficiently because because of low humidity conditions so increasing the temperature and uh, with, with the increase in temperature with the average cooling even the rh also will increase okay mm -hmm. so increasing and that is a requirement in the desert area no? decreasing the temperature and increasing the rh so mm -hmm. both will satisfy with the by reducing the means cost means it's efficient system compared with the air conditioning so we'll talk about this process so you'll find in this on screen you see so what will happen at the time of evaporative cooling we'll check this you see this is point one and this is point two okay so the point one condition you can find here in example 100 degree Fahrenheit air at 13.6 grains per pound of dry air to 70 degree Fahrenheit ignore this percentage you see I'm interested to decrease the temperature from 100 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit with the evaporative cooling so first we'll check this uh, virtual temperature so I'm writing this WBT1 WBT1 equal to wbt2 equal to what you see these are wet bulb lines now you can see it's a 60 you see this is same so vital temperature we are not increasing our requirement to decrease the dew point uh, sorry drivable temperature and you can see this line this line is inclined or parallel with this wet bulb and the enthalpy no? so even the, enthalpy, uh, even the enthalpy also is going to be same so h1 equal to h2 equal to 26.3 btu per pound okay because we are not uh, adding the heat we are utilizing the heat from from the air from the air only 
okay we are additionally we are not adding the height so the series in enthalpy change is same next if you talk about rh you see rh1 equal to you see is very low we can find this is uh, four point very low you see this line this is 10 this is 20 means suppose this is 10 so this is less than 10 nearly i can say five percent you can check in the circuit chart with this condition also but what about rh2 rh2 means somewhere here this is 55 exactly is 56 percent so you see this is less than 60 satisfying the home in comfort and the temperature tribal temperature you see starting d b t one d b t one is what 100 degree mm -hmm. Fahrenheit. d b t two is what 70 70 so 70 is a, is a very good temperature for a cooling point of view anyhow extracting this we required a proper capacity air cooler did not mean that any small air cooler will maintain this much of temperature so that you need to design accordingly so again the flow rate of that air and all is required to consider in designing at this level this is what we're considering is for one pound of water just example to understand the process of your particular that's it at this level just we are talking about the process how we can achieve with the system that is the other story that you can get this by properly designing the air cooler in that air cooler the major parameter is finding the flow rate next so you see so just remember at the time of evaporative cooling enthalpy and bedroom temperature is going to be constant rh will increase and when rh increases what will happen to this humidity ratio w1 w2 you see w1 is less than 20 say I'm considering say 15 for example roughly then what about w2 this point this point is 60 so this is what 60 grains per pound of dry air this also grain per pound so in this case rh and humidity increases and dpt oh, sorry wbt and thalpy remain same and dew point temperature decreases or in other words if when you decrease this dew point temperature by maintaining this constant wet bulb so enthalpy will will be same and rh and humidity ratio will increase just uh, try to understand the relation between this mm -hmm. that will help at the time at the time of calculation yes one question sir no condensation is occur that no. means the humidity humidity ratio should be equal i think humidity ratio yeah humidity ratio that means mm -hmm. no condensation no condensation is occurring so same amount of uh, same amount of moisture is present in the room but you see evaporation is taking place now that's the reason increasing in the in this humidity ratio mm -hmm. because you see evaporate cooling Yes, 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 yes. By evaporating the water. Okay. So this was about, about evaporative cooling. Next, we have one more very important uh, mix air condition. And this will use at the time of psychometric analysis also. Mix air condition. Sir, sir, is... Just one minute. Evaporation in the cooling coil, right? We are not using any cooling coil here. Air cooler. The it's air is simply... passing, uh, air is passing through a wet honeycomb pad. And when the air passes, the air heat is extracted by the water and the water evaporates. And that evaporates. That water. means we are talking simply the cooler. We're using yeah, air cooler. Air, air cooler. Yeah, okay. There is no cooling. No, no, no vapor compression cycle. No, no, no. One more question. What happens when the air comes in contact with the cold air? Cold air. Can you please elaborate this? What happens when air comes in? You see, it's a continuous air. process. Na? So when the air passes, through a layer of water, the air heat extract by the water and the water evaporates and you'll get the cool air. And when the air passes through that uh, layer of water means it will extract that moisture also. That says the humidity also increases. And if you are providing the cool cold air, it means it can extract more heat. 
for example generally in air cooler we are using the ice also na so that efficiency will increase yeah mr javed that is a question or uh... yes yes got it so just to increase the efficiency normally in air cooler we are using ice so that they're using the temperature of water will help to increase the evaporation okay but remember this evaporative cooling efficient uh, will work efficiently or this is a process for desert areas or the look for for the location with the low humidity in summer or else what will happen uh, no doubt with the evaporative cooling the temperature can drop but with the humid area what? humidity also increases or it may mo reach more than 60% and that that will not uh, a comfortable condition for him <laughs> yes but in summer uh, air is more humid na no in general summers are wet but not in the desert area that you see for evaporation water is required na suppose in a location where there is a no water in summer means no evaporation no evaporation means even in summer you will find the less humidity Okay, means the right. air will become completely dry air. Not, I cannot say completely. Less, less humid, not less high humid. Content. You see, for example, you cannot use this air cooler concept in Dubai or in uh, in India, Vishakhapatnam, or in Al Khobar, or where you have the seashore. Seashore areas, we cannot use this air cooler because in seashore areas, as the temperature increases, the humidity increases because of availability of water. more and more evaporation in that area so the water will uh, miss if already the moisture is with the maximum level in the in the air means the evaporation you cannot expect the evaporation no evaporation means no cooling sir uh, what i uh, means in the room when we are using this air coolers na so mm -hmm. we, we feel very humid so uh, is there any role of exhaust air you see the best if you want to get the efficiency for for the air cooler the evaporative side it is recommended to place outside the room like window ac okay you can expect the maximum efficiency or is what will happen the complete evaporative or complete evaporation means is going to be in the in the room only you will get the you see when uh, first of all the water when passes through a layer of wet uh, means mesh or uh, we can say this honeycomb it will extract the moisture apart from this the the air which is sorry the water which is evaporated because of extracting the heat that also in the room mm -hmm. okay so that will definitely within no time the rh will increase or the humidity will increase and you can then that's the reason normally if you use air cooler in the room without any exhaust okay so you will get uh, lower in temperature but you cannot breathe easy because of this higher sir, the air reaches its uh, saturation yes saturated means that is also not comfort na for women you cannot breathe easy and you will find uh, the muggy muggy conditions what we discussed at the beginning relative humidity can reach up to 97 98% mm, yes so sir it's not a good idea for uh, humidity is more like mumbai uh, like you see that's the reason that's the reason yeah, as yeah. i said at the beginning this mm -hmm. cooling concept this air cooler nothing but a desert cooler the name itself is a desert cooler the air cooler chill name is a desert cooler this is used in the desert areas efficiently not in all the areas um in india in mean, many locations you will find this because of the because of this uh, like in the dry area power conserver less, less humidity so in because of uh, because you see those who cannot afford the ac they are using this air cooler even in the humid areas but you know you can it will not work efficiently ha but des in desert area it's a very good option where it, it will help to increase the efficiency means power consumption is less as well as you can expect the cooling and increasing in humidity that is a requirement in desert areas so okay. that's the reason air cooler itself is a means the actual concept for air cooler is for desert area only so that's the reason we used to call desert air coolers or desert coolers next next we'll talk about this mixed air process with two example first example with the 50 50% mixing mixing means i'm talking about the retained air and the fresh air fresh air from outside retained air from the room itself and in actual practice we are not taking the complete fresh air and the percentage of fresh air that is as per the standard we have as say 62.1 we have carrier standard or you'll find the cfc other standards also and based on standard we have the percentage or we have the flow rate for fresh air Okay, that will use at the time of calculation. For example, if you are dealing with the office as per carrier standard, one can use twenty-five cfm per person. 
in case of ASHRAE 62.1, 5 CFM per person as well as for area 0 0.06 square feet, 0 0.06 CFM per square feet. We'll discuss in detail. Right level, at this level, just I'm giving the idea. So it it means we are in actual practice, we are not completely using the fresh air. Only in special cases, we are considering 100% fresh air. In the rest of the cases, we are using only part of the fresh air. Remaining, we are, we are going to use return air. Okay. Those who are already working, they know this. Because if, you, if I take the complete fresh air, what will happen to the cooling coil? The load on the cooling coil will affect na? because uh, the outside air is what uh, the outside air is in summer. The outside air is what hot and humid. So if you take the complete fresh air to cool down to reduce the temperature, say from ninety five degree Fahrenheit to seventy six. 95 degrees centigrade Fahrenheit, I'm considering say outside temperature, for example. This may vary from location to location. For example, for a particular location, outside temperature is 95 degree Fahrenheit. So 95 to 75 or 76 means we require more energy. Na? Okay, so we don't, and that is not required. Complete fresh air is not required. We require part of that fresh air to maintain the oxygen level to exhaust the false smell and all that as per the standard that we have detailed standard at the time of load calculation so at the time when we deal with the calculation remember we are not taking the complete fresh air partly fresh air remaining is a return air so this process is related to that that's the reason i'm giving the idea but don't worry about the fresh air and all we have a detailed topic to discuss in load calculation so you see the example is 50 percent fresh air and 50 percent return air first example in second example we'll consider say 30 70 ratio but just for example for learning point of view so let me relate these points first. So you can find the three point, point one, point two, point three. First point one condition. I'm considering point one as outdoor condition. Mm -hmm. See, this uh, this is a condition of outside outside air, and this point two I'm considering as return air condition. Return air means again supplied to the space and return from the space itself. And point three is a condition of the mix air so you see when the return air and fresh air mixes you'll get the result temperature no? means the mixing temperature so what will be the condition after mixing so if you check this condition at point one and you know how to get this point point one i got considering i'm just considering say this condition at point one dbt drivable temperature say 95 degree fahrenheit you can you can check you see this is 95 and rh you see rh is close to say 50 and humidity ratio 117.4 grains per pound of dry air you see this one and wbt variable temperature you see this is 78 degree Fahrenheit. This is a condition of point 0.1. This condition air is going to mix with the point 0.2 condition. Point 0.2 is a return air, return from the space only. So dBT 76. You see 70 and 80. So I can consider 75 degree Fahrenheit. RH is same now. You see this incline line with the same. It means the RH is not changing. We are maintaining the same. RH is 50%. Humidity ratio, see somewhere here. So this is 64 grains Six. per pound of dry air. 64.6. Ah, Next, WBD. 63. 63 degree Fahrenheit. So you see this point 0.1 condition air mixed with the point 0.2. So I'll get the mix air condition first dew point temperature so you see dew point temperature sorry drivable temperature drivable temperature increase or decreases Driable compared to temperature. return air it is increasing compared to fresh air it is decreasing and how i got this point because you see in this example we are considering 50 50 percent so this is a, this is a midpoint of this line if i consider say 70 percent return air and 30 percent fresh air in that i can mark somewhere here Okay, like 70-30 uh, ratio. But in this case, 50% percent, percent means as per the percentage, you can you can find this point. Getting a point? Yes. So now, dew point temperature. 
here you see this is nearly 85 85 degree Fahrenheit RH as I said is same 50 percent and you see whatever the percentage you are considering you can get in the state line with the RH with the constant RH as per the process remember this point next humidity ratio 90.4 and WBT you see 71 degree Fahrenheit so in this case we are not bothered about RH is same but you see the temperature compared with the written air increases and compared with the fresh air decreases so in one way we are getting the advantage in another way we are getting the disadvantage so in order to reduce this temperature we require this cooling means mm -hmm. One important point here, now to reduce this temperature as per the room requirement, cooling is required. So it means the fresh air is going to be one of the major load on the cooling coil. Remember this. And nothing but this is the heat gain through ventilation. Very, very important. At the time of load calculation, we'll discuss in detail. So fresh air is going to be the major load on the cooling coil. Up means like the heat gain through this uh, radiation in summer is one of the major source similarly the heat gain through ventilation also one of the major source okay that's the reason we have the standards for ventilation like as per standard we are we are going to provide that much of flow rate only for the fresh air we will not take the complete fresh air getting a point online yes next similarly you'll find one more example in that we'll consider like 70 30 or exactly say 7426 at this level just get the idea how this uh, parameter is changing at the time of psychometric analysis uh, you'll get the clear idea because at this level we are talking about only the condition of the mix air at the time of psychometric analysis we'll find out the condition of all that air like fresh air return air supply air mix air so that we can call as a psychometric analysis so this is just example for the mix air condition later we'll deal with the different conditions for the different types of air similarly one more example i've given in this case you see this part says 74 percent and this part say 26 percent so on the scale you need to find out the percentage and mark this point and find out the mix air conditions so if you know the outside condition and the retain air condition, one can find out the condition for the mix air. And this also will help at the time of the load calculation. Just understand the process, but how to use is the next story at the time of load calculation. So this was about the process. Next, we have uh, three more, oh, sorry, we have three equations to discuss. Very, very important. We'll use at the time of load calculation. So you see, psychometric calculations, you'll find three equations. One is for sensible, one is for latent, and one is a combination nothing but total and you see directly i can use these equations for example you see first equation is qs equal to 1.08 into cfm into delta t second equation is 0.68 into cfm missing flow rate into delta w and third we have this total qt nothing but total heat transfer 4.5 into flow rate into delta h Directly we can use in the calculation because the stand these are the standard equations. And nobody will ask in interview how we got these equations. Because this is very commonly used in actual practice in HVAC. But as an engineer, you should know how we got these equations. Because many have the confusion how we got this 0.68 from where we are getting this 1.08, etc. So that's the reason I added it in the syllabus. So as an engineer, this is required, not for interview point of view. Because repeatedly we'll use this equation at the time of load calculation for ventilation, for infiltration, and for so for to find out uh, at the time of psychometric analysis, etc. Okay, so here you can find the three equation. But before this, some important points to discuss, which is highlighted. You see the first formula, QT, nothing but total heat, which is uh, required to extract by the coil, equal to what sensible plus latent okay so how to get the sensible latent i'll show you but before this some important theory you see in most hvc calculation volume flow rate is used rather than mass flow rate 
remember this point we'll use in the equation next only you see instead of volume flow rate we are using sorry we are using instead of mass flow rate we are using volume flow rate nothing but i'm talking about cfm when change in temperature are small using volume flow rate rather than mass flow rate accepted because the air density doesn't change much in case of very high temperature difference it will change but the temperature difference in the hv system except very low temperature areas like in canada or in some location you'll find like minus 20 minus 40 that case is a special case i'm not talking about that but in india in gulf in many location in even in many western countries the temperature difference outside to inside compared with that very low temperature is less that's the reason we are assuming that the density change is very little in that case that's because of that we are considering volume flow rate instead of mass flow rate remember this point we'll use in mass the next equation. flow rate sir mass flow I'll show rate is convection i'll show you in the equation give me a minute just remember this point we are using this volume flow rate instead of mass flow rate so you see the formula first for sensible heat as before this uh, you must know this density also this value also will use the a density we are considering 0 0.075 pounds per cubic feet this is a standard like you know the water density or other fluid density similarly we have density of air this is standard and this is an english system in metric system this number will change at this level what i'm using is english system so 0 0.075 pounds per cubic feet pound is a unit of weight and cubic feet is a volume so you see density means what the weight per unit volume no? so this is a weight per unit volume I and mean, unit volume here is one cubic feet okay so if you take one cubic feet of air volume the weight is going to be 0 0.075 pounds we'll use this value also in the next equation and apart from this uh, one more point uh, the specific heat of air 0.24 btu per pound of sorry pound degree fahrenheit and this is a specific heat of air i think remember at the time of chapter 3 we discussed specific heat of water nothing but at the time of learning btu so specific specific heat of water in english system is one because one pound is required for one pound increasing one degree fahrenheit one btu is required similarly for air 0.24 btu per pound for increasing one degree fahrenheit so this value also will use in the equation okay and and we have one more this specific uh, heat for vapor 0.45 but the quantity of vapor compared with the total air is very less so we are not considering this value anyhow let me show you this so first equation you see sensible heat the general equation mcp delta t as a mechanical you know in that we are considering m is what mass na? cp is what specific heat right so instead of mass flow rate here in calculation i'm using volume flow rate okay you see instead of m i'm using this volume with the density and you see mass is what volume into density now so you see this formula instead of mass flow rate in hvc we are using volume flow rate so instead of m i'm using this density and v and cp same and this t2 t this delta t also same t2 minus t1 and this may change to t1 minus t2 also as per the season at this level i'm using this term delta t because this should be higher temperature to lower temperature in summer this will be to minus ti in winter this is going to be ti minus to means inside temperature is more in winter no, compared to outside so heat loss in summer heat gain so at this level don't think that always you'll get or, or else t2 will should be higher so in here i'm considering as delta t we'll use that the time calculation will get the clear right? at this level just focus on how we got the equation so now you see the density what we discussed just now 0 0.075 pound per cubic feet and uh, here we are multiplying with the 60 y 60 because we required the result in hour and here this volume we are using in cubic feet per minute okay so this is for minute means i want result in hour no? so this is a conversion and 0.24 is what specific specific heat right and t2 minus t1 is same so if you multiply 0 0.075 into 60 into 0.24 you'll get 1.08 so many have the confusion how we got this 1.08 that's the reason i add this one so we got this from the specific heat and the density 
and the 60 is just a conversion don't get confused to get the result in btu per hour and this is the sensible heat this qs is what sensible heat and this will use at the time of heat gain through ventilation heat gain through infiltration for sensible or for example when the air in and out so how much heat given to this coil or extracted by this coil for sensible you can find out this with this equation or else if you're still if you're not getting this how to use don't worry when we use at the time of application means at the time of load calculation you'll get the clear idea at this level memorize this we'll use at the time of calculation in some books instead of 1.08 you may find 1.1 because this uh, density and specific uh, density is going to be specific heat you may find slight uh, change in number as per the standard okay so don't get confused 1.08 or you may find 1.1 in carrier handbook uh, you'll find 1.08 in ashray handbook you'll find 1.1 1.1 or 1.08 the difference is 0 0.02 na? so you can ignore this you can ignore this one so don't get confused so this is the equation for sensible similarly equation for latent how we got this 0.68 you see the formula mass hv hv is what this is a latent heat and you know latent heat of 5 is 335 kilojoules per kg at the time of unit of refrigeration we discussed now similarly this latent heat for the air 1065 btu per pound means if you want to convert one pound of water to this to convert to steam how much heat energy is required 1065 with the standard conditions so again m i'm considering in volume flow rate so instead of m density and volume hv is nothing but this latent heat you see latent heat of evaporation we have the value 1065 standard value this is in video per pound and we are using the same so you see in equation density this 60 is a conversion this is a hv nothing but the latent heat and why this 1 by 7000 you see like 60 minutes per hour we are using a conversion similarly we are using this 1 by 1000 for conversion why because here we are using this pound and this delta w this w o w2 and w1 nothing but delta w no? nothing but hemi ratio in the in the calculation remember we'll use this in grains per pound or else you can find out in this formula or in actual practice also we'll follow the same you see w2 minus w1 or omega actually omega is uh, we are writing at the time writing we are considering as w so nothing but humidity ratio so w2 minus w1 nothing but delta w change in humidity ratio in grains per pound so we require conversion uh, and this 1065 is what btu per pound so this is again conversion because you know this one pound equal to 7000 grains we discussed this point at the time of uh, psychometry right one pound equal to seven thousand grains conversion so this 60 is conversion to get the result in hour and this seven thousand also conversion to get the result in to use this w on this humidity ratio in grains per pound of dry air so finally i got this 0.68 you see 0 0.075 multiply with 60 multiply with 1065 multiply with one by seven thousand or is instead of 1065 you can use 0.15 i have directly have given this video per grain convert value instead of 1065 you can use 0.15 and you can remove this you'll get the same result but this is com most commonly used value for latent heat of uh, uh, this water so here 0.68 so this is a factor based on the specific heat and the density of water so the result the equation is ql equal to 0.68 multiply with the cfm flow rate that that this will calculate for the total air or for fresh air or for infiltration air what or, or as per the case with the delta w why delta w because we are talking about latent in case of sensible 
delta t and i think remember we discussed at the time of psychometry delta t used to find out the sensible heat of air na? so there's a reason delta t nothing but i'm talking about tribal temperature na? t2 minus t1 both are tribal so tribal temperature is used to find out the sensible heat of airs and this humidity ratio will use to find out the latent heat of air okay because this is related to the moisture na? so remember this equation we'll use at the time of calculation very very important and this 0.68 in all the handbooks you'll find 0.68 only there is no change in this for sensible 1.1 or 1.08 you'll find some changes with the different handbook but this 0.68 is fixed you'll not find change in the different handbooks similarly you see this two equation to find out sensible latent if you know this delta t and this delta w with the required flow rate we have one more equation with that we can directly find out the heat if you know the enthalpy here this is for total. If you know QS and QL, Q, uh, this QT is equal to QS plus QL. Directly you can find it. Or else, we have direct formula for this total heat. You see, here, mass multiply with the H2 minus H1. This H represents what? Enthalpy. Change in enthalpy. Okay. And enthalpy, you know, is not just a dry air. Na? Enthalpy is what? Summation of the enthalpy of dry air as well as the moisture so this will cover both so here m again i'm writing pv volume flow rate then h2 minus h1 so if you know this difference one can use this formula so you see again this density the 60 is a conversion and we are using this cfm h2 minus h1 so 0 0.07 for multiply with 60 4.5 is a factor multiply the cfm with the delta h okay so one can use this formula if you know this delta h or else commonly we are using uh, because we can find out delta t and delta w with the psychometry chart with the conditions of uh, the air so we can use this qs and ql formula if you know this delta h one can directly use this formula even at the time of coil designing this will help by the manufacturer from the manufacturer okay so these are the equations just memorize this we'll use at the time of load calculation how to use we'll discuss in detail you see in all this formula this flow rate is unknown anyhow delta t delta w delta h in some cases we can find out using psychometric chart but about this flow rate is important for that we have a separate calculation and this flow rate this uh, flow rate means i'm talking about the cfm this will this can be the total fresh air sorry this can be the total supply air or this can be a fresh air this can be a return air this can be the infiltration air etc okay so whatever the case we can use this formula to find out the heat gain through that air so with this we did this uh, psychometry chapter four but still as i said no psychometric analysis contact factor and bypass factor is a part of psychometry that we'll use at the time that we'll discuss at the time of chapter seven okay <laughs>